So it's been two years of working from home during the pandemic. People have been going through, I think over two years now, I've lost track. Uh, but many employees have gotten so used to not going into work, they're like, why am I going back again? Now, uh, many offices would like folks to come back because maybe it's some camaraderie, maybe it's a little bit more efficient with their work. But there's a bunch of bosses that are really trying to convince many of their employees to do so because there's pushback. Let's get straight into this because John Roade, who's president of a sports marketing company called Revolution, He's one of those people who's really hoping for it, and he's really trying hard. Let's go to some of his uh, some of the links that he's going through. As president of Revolution, John Roade has installed a scoreboard, bleachers, and a tunnel between the elevator and the lobby to make his 100 employees feel like athletes emerging from a locker room into an arena to further entice his staff to come back to work. After many got comfortable doing their jobs from home during the pandemic, Roade stocked an office bar with free beer and bourbon for on-site happy hours. Uh, then there's the full-size race car that's in the lobby. Let's take a look at that race car that he uh, put in the lobby, and I'm sure no one can drive it. Um, but it's kind of dope, though, exactly. right? Exactly. It's cool, 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 cool. Um, so out, despite all this, the the, the free booze and uh, the tunnel with with steam coming out as you walk out and getting your name announced, um, many people still aren't buying it. Uh, so um, as pointed out, he said, it can be frustrating to really do everything that you could possibly do. Try not to be overbearing, engage with your employees, and then have to deal with situations where people still aren't comfortable coming back. Um, there's also moves uh, that could influence corporate media, uh, corporate America going forward. There's big banks like Goldman Sachs. Of course, you need to be in person for, to work with them. Also, Jeffrey's Group, they recently recalled much of their staffs and tech giants like Microsoft and Meta. They're also planning some March returns. So I don't know if they're going to have race cars in the lobby, but. They're gonna have to do a little bit more, it seems. Um, so more than ever, there's other office workers that are deciding to work to home, and these are some of their thoughts on these um, initiatives. So according to a Pew uh, Research Center survey of 5,889 workers, 61% of people working from home today say they're not going back into their workplace because they just don't want to, and 38% say their office is closed. That's a complete reversal from October of 2020 when 64% of people were working from home because their offices were closed and 36% were doing so just because they wanted to. Hmm. So there's many people that are leaving jobs even over this. They're like, okay, you want us to come back to work? Fine, I quit. Wow. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a 36-year-old software engineer. His name is Jason Alvarez Score. And he quit his New York-based job when his former employer signaled that a return was going to come. He's one of these guys. Let's get into his details here. You're not gonna get me on the train for two hours for free bagels is what he said. <laughs> it isn't that Mr. Shore disliked his old boss or the workplace despite how crappy he was talking there. The father of two young children says he simply found something better, a remote job that allowed him to move his family to Puerto Rico where they plan to live for at least two years. So what I say to that is good luck, Mr. Uh, Shore. Is that his name? Jason Alvarez Shore, good luck. It must be nice. I'd love if you can move off to Puerto Rico and continue to work. That's your prerogative, it's a beautiful thing. There's people that are quitting jobs though because they're like, eh, do I really have to get out of bed? Do I really have to leave out of the front door? You know what, somebody, somebody might walk past me on the street and say hi. And I'm be like, oh my God. These are the reasons people wanna stay home. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's and, not and, the reason and, people and because, wanna stay home. And because Don't minimize they've what, gotten what their real concerns are. To not putting <laughs> uh, socks and underwear on. No. Did, did, I, did I nail it, Look. Anna? No, you no. didn't nail it. Uh, first of all, I will be the first to admit that I don't want to have conversations with strangers, but that's not the reason why uh, most workers don't want to go back into the office. Look, you can give them free booze, uh, which by the way, that could actually open up other problems in the workplace. No. Uh, so that's not necessarily the smartest thing. You can try to you know, provide all these like in office perks. It doesn't do away with the fact that most of the employers who want their workers to go back into the office are doing that not because they wanna increase productivity, but because they wanna keep an eye on their workers. They want to surveil their workers, that's the main point. If you're able to work from home and still be productive and effective in your job, there's no reason why you need to be in an office where you know middle management is keeping an eye on you, executives are keeping an eye on you. You feel freer in your own home, you save 
money by not having to pay for gas for a, you know a lengthy commute, which most Americans have to deal with, uh, because they've moved further and further away from their workplaces right. due to the high cost of housing. I, I think that there are legitimate reasons, and the other reason is childcare is still unbelievably unaffordable. So. It's easier to work from home and and not have to deal with the added costs and burdens associated with going into the office. Anna brings up a million great points. I'm just gonna add the dumb sports guy point, okay? So from my perspective of working in sports, how I feel about a company adding bleachers (laughs) and like a ping pong table (laughs) and like a Batmobile that like, Yeah, cool. Like that's awesome for the first like maybe week. And then you know what happens? You're gonna start walking in and being like, man, I hate those bleachers. (laughs) Totally. Man, (laughs) man, I I hate that bar of booze. And like, you know, Greg's gonna come in and meanwhile he's like drinking bourbon at 9 a.m. because he just (laughs) had a terrible meeting. Like, why are these incentives? They're not. Um, the biggest reason, as Anna alluded to, is saving money. That's what it comes down to. That's, not That's what why I hear. people don't want to go into the office. And look, I I totally understand the camaraderie that the office brings, but also in many ways super counterproductive because you know Greg, the drunk guy at 9 a.m., just wants to start slurring words and being like, "So how's your dad?" You know, and it's like, dude, I gotta edit this like five pieces, and I have a deadline by noon. And then he wants to ask me how Carl's doing, and like, I'm all for that, just not when I'm on a deadline. So screw the bleachers and Greg. I understand, but this thing, if you're a miserable person, you hate your life and your job, wouldn't you be like, oh, screw this coffee table at home? You know what? That TV sucks. I hate doing this. Why am I on this computer no. that keeps freezing? Because those things happen at home. And if you just hate your life, you're gonna find something to complain about. When, like, yes, I, I get it. By the way, I do think the bleachers and the tunnel and the smoke and all that stuff is over the top. I do think so. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is if you just hate. You're saying I'm gonna get sick of, I just wanna be clear, you're saying I'm gonna get sick of my TV. Well, you get sick of bleachers, what did the the bleachers do to you? That's your argument, that the bleachers have offended you. They're existing when I didn't ask them as a perk to my work life. So who cares, why does that piss you off? I don't get it. I, I don't, no, 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 it doesn't I don't care. I don't care about the bleachers. I don't care about like the so-called perks that are being offered, uh-huh. just like you know, lure you back into the office. My argument is that for a lot of people, and it doesn't need. I love my job, right? I, I have no choice but to go into the studio because we have to do the show from the studio, right? I don't want to do my job from home because I hate my job. It's just that you there are added benefits to the job that I already love by being able to do it from home. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the associated, by the way, like this, the most stressful element of my day is the deadline. I got to be yeah. seated, ready to go by 2.45 PM Pacific um, every single day. And adding a 30 to 45 minute commute to the production process to like prepare the show is difficult. It takes time away for me, but I, but whatever. I'd rather do the show from the studio. I'm just giving you like a personal example. I understand that. Not, yeah, not having to pay for gas. You know, childcare for Charlie is just astronomical. I can't afford it, so I'm just kidding about Charlie's <laughs> dog. Um, Thank but, God. But it's a real problem. It is a real problem for people who have children. We have no. We have no real support this, this, for parents. And this, and this is the thing, know? and that's that's a problem with our society and with our country, right? We don't provide things like, of course, and that goes beyond even the childcare for healthcare and things like that. Because many people take jobs, and you've mentioned this many times, even take jobs because there's a potential for you to get maybe some healthcare because that's so hard to come by in the richest country in human history and all that stuff we like to brag about. But wait, Rick, one second, because yeah. we talked about um, uh, things like being looked over your shoulder and being micromanaged. Hundred percent, great point, right? You know what's worse than that? And this is again, this is back to opinion, because there's a lot of gray area. So there's no across the board argument. I don't think 100% of people have any need to be back into the office. I also don't think 100% of people have a need to not be in the office. I think there's, there's some compromise I think that can happen here. Because you know what's worse? Then a manager may be coming over and be like, "Oh, did you get those papers done yet? How about those TPS reports?" You know what's worse than that is getting about 27 <laughs> emails that say TPS reports one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Hey, you answered the first twelve, but you didn't answer the thirteenth. Oh my God! You know we send these emails for a reason. 
but they're swamped with 180 other emails that you also have to yeah. read and respond to, then go to this Zoom meeting, then go on this Skype call, and then go to that. Well, you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather sit my ass in my chair and be like, nope, yeah, sure, got it, rather than. Right, Jay, oh. I get it. Look, oh, if, typo. If, if, if Jank <laughs> is annoying. bothering you, just say it. <laughs> mm, yeah, I mean, that Jank would be would, great. Jank would like, run into the studio <laughs> like a minute before we went live. Like That's Jank true. was not a problem at all. But it, you know, like to be completely honest and frank, it was a disruptive environment when you're trying to produce a show. To your point, mm -hmm. Ricky, you know, with everyone in there because. It's an open concept office and people, everyone has different responsibilities and have to engage in meetings and conversations. And you can't help but be distracted when you're supposed to be like reading some dense article like from the intercept about some foreign policy issue. It's tough, it, it, it was really challenging. And like, I hate saying this because the pandemic is has been so devastating for so many different reasons. But I would be lying if I didn't say that for the first time in literally years, I got over my anxiety and my depression because it opened up time for me to do other things that I love. It gave me the opportunity to focus on things other than work because I don't have to deal with that insane commute, you know? And so people are unwilling to give give up that time that they get with their families or the time that they get to pursue a hobby. And so I think that moving forward for jobs that can be done remotely, Workers should be given the option, right? Unless there's like evidence indicating that working from home is somehow hurting um, their job performance, people should be able to work yeah. from home if they're able to do it. From right, home. and I'm sure it's a case by case basis. I'm sure there's plenty of people who've been working from home and ain't got nothing done because there are distractions. Right. Go ahead, Rick. Sorry. Real quick, real quick, like just to you know not stay fixated on it, but like the bleachers and the bar and the <laughs> ping pong table and the Batmobile. Like, you know what you could do? You don't really have to offer those things because they're just mundane pieces of entertainment for like five minutes in a day, maybe 10. You could put that money that you would spend, which is literally thousands of dollars and give it back to your workers. And then they'll do what, come into work? <laughs> No. Is that the bribe? That's what he wants them to do. That's the whole point of the grace cars and the bleachers, which don't work. So but stupid. that's the whole point. If he says, okay, everybody, I give you guys an extra hundred bucks a month. I mean, he's got what? He's got, he said, 100 employees, right? Give everyone an extra hundred bucks a month. Come in. They'll be like, that ain't worth it. It's just not. It's just, it just mm -hmm. isn't. Now, again, that's the basis for it. And every job is different. Um, I'm just saying, everyone's circumstance is so much different because if we're talking personal stories. I'm so. So much more efficient when I'm in the office. One hundred and fifty percent more efficient when I'm in the office. Do you, boo? Go right, to the exactly, office. Exactly. Right. No. Exactly. And that's that's my point. Because there's people who have this assumption that, oh my God, go in the office. Nobody wants to do that. Not true. One hundred percent not true. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and also, it's become, it's become a, a bit of a, a badge of honor to be like, you know what I don't like, talking. Oh God, it's not that hard. <laughs> or just say, I don't have time right now. It's it's simple. There's humans. No, right? please, Jr. Come on. What? Come what? on. Yeah, you get approached by a, a department head or an executive, and they need to talk to you, and you're gonna tell them, no, buzz off. I'm busy. Please. Oh please. no 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 not, not when it comes second. to that. Yeah, true. But um, what about when I get the seven emails from the department head or a manager? Oh. I'll get to it when I get to it. It's very different from being approached and being asked for like an impromptu meeting, which would drive me crazy to be honest with yes. you. Like it's super time consuming and it's like, by the way, that's the other thing. People don't, they see everything from their own lived experience, their own perspective, right? So my favorite thing in the world is when like, I get asked to do something in the middle of the day that's gonna take like an hour or an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you not know that we're producing a two and a half hour show? Like. <laughs> But they don't know. Like it's there's no ill intent at all. There's now, no malice. Now imagine it's if the email the comes email. while you. What if while you're reading that detailed, Ignore robust the article, you can get to it. You can't Ignore get to it because you're too busy reading a deep, in, in, in depth email. And then the manager comes back and says, "Hey, it's been about 45 minutes. Uh, why haven't you answered my email yet?" They no go, one oh, says that. <laughs> Ricky. Are we airing dirty laundry right no, now? No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, I cuz I don't think I, I I don't. You know my this has been my new year's resolution for 3 years. Cuz I'm on the <laughs> other I'm on the other end of the spectrum. 
You know, you know how soon I get back to three, three in a row, huh? Three row, three in a row. You know, you know how soon I get back to emails. And this is this is a good argument for uh, for folks who ask me why did you answer that email? Because most times the email has to get bumped back up, and it says you haven't answered this in three days. Do you want to answer this? And I not not from the manager. This is from Google Sounds. telling me, mm. hey, bro, you haven't answered this email yet. I was like, oh my bad, I missed it. It may be the seven thousand others that you sent me in two days. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sift through those that, first. I, I I need to make something very clear. <laughs> That's a personal preference. Like literally, <laughs> this is what we've been talking about this whole time is personal preferences. Them. You could change it from like you don't have to oh, be no, reminded. No, but you have to be reminded because that was work. It's not like I don't want to do the work. It's it's lost in a pool of BS from other mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. that I don't need to read. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, look, this is just a tip because um, I've learned the hard way over the years. When it comes to work email and when it comes to your phone number, like the, the way that people usually reach out to me is like texting me yeah. or my work email, like I'm so protective of those two things. So do I get like nonsense emails time to time? Yes. Um, but I've gotten really good at blocking anything that's like, I'm a publicist and we would like you to have some mm. random person on to talk about like a potato chip that they developed. It's like block. <laughs> I don't I don't want to hear how from much you again. How You're, much do I have to pay you to to do that for my email? Because I've tried and I literally can't keep up with them. They're like they're like You gotta be super militant. They multiply. About it. It they works. multiply. It's a virus, bro. We need a vaccine. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.